Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this demonstration, I will be flasking a maxillary and mandibular denture in preparation for processing the complete denture. You all have at this point completed setting the denture teeth and completing the wax up. And prior to flasking the denture, you should remove the master cast from the mounting, as you see here. And then this is simply placed in water so that your master cast is thoroughly wet prior to flasking. I would like to show you that your flask consists of four parts. The bottom half of the flask, which retains the master cast, has a hole in the bottom in which a small round plate will fit into. This plate is necessary for easy ejection of the denture after it is processed. The second half of the flask or the top of the flask merely sets on the bottom and they are keyed together very accurately and then the plate fits over the top. In our first pour we will be using model plaster and I will pause and mix this material and proceed with the first pour of the maxillary denture. As you see, I've proceeded to mix the model plaster. At this point, we simply put the ring into the first half of the flask, take our wet master cast and set it here, and place our mix of model plaster into the lower half of the flask. At this point, we simply embed the cast into the plaster and begin to manipulate the plaster around the boxing edge of the denture. After the model plaster has gotten very near the final set, you can finish contouring the first pour. At this point, you will notice that there is stone on the wax, but that we have adequately brought the stone up, or excuse me, the plaster up to the boxing edge. At this point, we will put it in water and remove the stone that has adhered to the wax. This is most conveniently done in a sink with running water. For this purpose, I merely will take a toothbrush and remove the ex excess wax from the, the excess plaster from the wax. And you may also remove the excess model plaster from the holes in the flask. I'm going to set this one down. And I will show you a mandibular denture that I did prior to meeting here today to show you some of the characteristics of the first pour for flasking your denture. You'll notice that the entire boxing edge of the master cast is in contact with the model plaster of the first pour. It is most important to leave no undercuts in the stone. There can be undercuts in the wax or in the, with the teeth, but there can be no undercuts on the master cast. So this is what our first pour will look like. Now prior to making our second pour, we will coat both the maxillary and mandibular um, model with red soap so that we will have a separating media prior to our second pour. You simply place a little red soap on the flask denture and then rinse it off quickly. And I'll do the same thing with the maxillary denture. 
This red soap, again, acts as a separating media between the various pores. At this point, we will assemble the second half of our flask. And I will show you what this looks like in a moment. Now, it is most important that the teeth do not protrude above the top of the flask. If they were to go above the top of the flask, we would have to remove the cast and start over again, particularly if your model is quite thick. Our mandibular model will look like this. Now into this, we'll be, we will be making our second pour. And for our second pour, I think you can see that we will be using one half stone and one half model plaster. Now I will mix this and we will come back and I'll show you how to make the second pour. I have now mixed the proper ratio of model plaster and stone and we are ready to proceed with the second pour. As I mentioned, all of the excess model plaster has been removed from the wax and the teeth and we assemble the two halves of the flask and we are ready to vibrate the second pour into the flask. I, in, I like to vibrate the mix a little bit before I pour to get rid of any excess bubbles in the mix. At this point, I'll start with the mandibular and we simply pour from one portion of the flask until the entire surfaces of the teeth are covered. As you can see here, I'll set this one aside. I made a uh, large mix so I can pour both at the same time. It's very important to vibrate this thoroughly because the small bubbles that would be around the necks of the teeth would be present in the finished denture as bubbles on the denture. At this point, after we have made our second pour, we begin to remove some of the material and we begin exposing the incisal edges of the teeth. Now it is difficult to finalize this second pour until the stone and model plaster mixture have begun to reach the initial set. So at this point, I will go off camera for a few minutes while I complete the second pour, and I'll come back and show you what this looks like. In the intervening time, I've completed the second pour, as you can see here. And in this pour, we try to expose the incisal edges of all the teeth. Now the reason the second pour was made with half model plaster and half stone is that the mixture will be slightly st softer and it will be easier to remove after the denture is processed. I'll show you the other flask. With the mandibular model, I like to make a slight depression in the tongue space, again, for ease of removal after processing. Now with the third pour of our denture, we will be using dental stone or yellow stone because the last pour we want high strength so that the teeth do not move during the molding procedures. Prior to doing this, we will again put red soap on the stone, just a small amount, spread it around and rinse it off. And this acts as a separating media for the last pour. If you were 
if you did not use the red soap, there would be a tendency for these different layers to stick together. So we are now ready for the last pour, and in our last pour, we will be using yellow stone. I will proceed to mix this, and I'll come back and show you how we make the last pour for our denture. I have proceeded to mix the stone for this last pour for both the flasks. I've used a 200 gram mix. It usually requires about 100 grams for the last pour. I have deliberately not included the water powder ratios in this demonstration today because I assume that you would have experience with this by this point. Once we've mixed our Yellowstone, again, I like to vibrate it to get rid of any excess bubbles that may be in the mix. The third pour is very simple, but very important. We simply vibrate our mix over the incisal edges of the teeth. Proceed with the mandibular. doing this, we like to have a slight excess of stone for this pour. And with stone, of course, you have about eight minutes to work. And we will put the top on the maxillary flask and the top on the mandibular flask. And then we will tap it shut. Now you will notice the excess material will come out the holes in the top of the flask. This procedure is very simple, but it's important to have a very good mix and vibrate it well into the mold so that the teeth are in intimate contact with the stone with no voids. Now I will go away from camera for a few minutes and come back and I'll show you how we clean up our molds prior to the boil out. The third full pour has finally reached the final set and we're ready to clean up our flask. As you can see, excess material does squeeze out and at this point we like to remove it. The two small mounds of stone on the top of the flask are easiest to remove by simply tapping them. And I'm going to put this partly in water while I'm removing some of the excess plaster. This is very easy to do. And of course, the reason we do this, we want to keep our flask neat so that when we go to the following procedures, you will not be disturbing the, plas the plastic mixture that you're going to be putting into your mold. One thing I would like to point out at this time is that there are keys in the flask in the back, as you can see, one here and one up here. The top one does have stone in it, and I'm going to clear out some of the stone. There is also a key on the other side. It's important to remove some of the stone from these keys because later on when we are deflasking the denture, after it is processed, it is with these keys that we will be separating the flask. So at this point, we like to remove the plaster, at least some of the plaster, so that we can get a separating object into these keys. Many times we'll use a large screwdriver to do this and it has to fit into those slots. Now in the intervening time, I have completely cleaned off a lower flask, or the lower flask, and you can see it here. And this is what it will look like prior to going to the next stage. Now in summary, we have flask the upper and lower denture. We have made three pours. Two of those pours will remain with the top half of the flask and the first pour will remain with the master model. These pours differed in the type of plaster used because we would like to have adequate strength 
and yet we would also like to be able to remove the plaster mixes easily from the denture after it is processed. Now we are ready to go on to boiling out the denture, which would be the next phase in processing. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.